ikaw ba ay pauwi na ng Pilipinas at ikaw ay manggagaling sa isang yellow list country at ang travel date mo na pauwi sa Pilipinas ay anytime between January 16 to 31, 2022. Tamang-tama because ang video ito is about the yellow list country arrival protocol na binigay po ng IATF latest for this date. Watch this video and find out the details. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat mga kabayan at kaibigan. Ako po si Jamie Iris and welcome to my channel. This is Jamie Iris Talk TV wherein pag-uusapan po natin ano po ba yung latest IATF protocol para po sa mga yellow list countries. Yan po ang ating malalaman sa araw na ito. At syempre, welcome to everyone na bago pa lamang po kayo sa channel and this is your first time to watch a video of mine. Iniimbitahan ko po kayo to please subscribe so that you can get updated with the latest travel updates at iba pong relevant information na makakatulong sa inyo bilang traveler. At syempre, gayon din po pag meron po akong mga tutorials. At uh, maraming salamat po lahat. Uh, sa lahat po ng ating mga subscriber, maraming pong salamat sa patuloy niyo pong panonood at pagsubaybay po sa ating channel. Simulan na po natin ang pagbibigay ng information sa inyo regarding the latest IATF protocol. Alamin po muna natin, sino-sino ba ang allowed na pumasok dito sa Pilipinas who are allowed to enter here in the Philippines. So, uh, we have the following. First one are Filipino citizens. So, again, anyone who's holding a valid Philippine passport. And then, at the same time, we also have anyone who has the identification certificate as proof of recognition as Filipino citizen. Citizen Retention and Reacquisition Act of 2003 certificate under RA 922 Five. And then number two, any balik banyan under RA six seven six eight. Only nationals from non visa required countries under E O four zero eight. Former Filipino or traveling with Filipino or former Filipino spouse or parent. And then last but not the least are only foreign nationals who have valid and existing visa. Nine A visa holders are required an entry exemption document EED from the country's foreign post abroad, except for for foreign spouses, parents, and or children of Filipino citizens not traveling together with the Filipino who shall present a visa with notation EED not required per IATF Resolution Number One. So, yan lang po at this point in time ang maaari makapasok sa Pilipinas. Marami po sa inyo nagtatanong sa akin, Ms. Jamie, paano po yung mga foreign tourists, maaari na ba sila pumasok? Sa ngayon, because of the number of cases that we have for January, hindi pa po sila allowed na pumasok. So, pero tingnan po natin this coming month po, February or uh, March, looking forward, bumaba na po yung mga cases natin at yung dating na na postponed, na pag-aalaw po nila na pagpasok ng turista sa Pilipinas, I hoping very soon uh, mag-grant po ulit or ma-allow. But at this point in time, foreign tourists are not yet allowed. Or by the way, if you are a foreigner and watching this video, so this video will be in Tagalog. Most of the time, I may speak in English every now and then, but uh, do not worry. I'll prepare a video that is solely in English for all of you so that you can better understand uh, what I'm sharing about the Philippine updates. Now, uh, you all know regarding the Philippines' new country risk classification. So again, if it's green, it means low risk, uh, yellow, moderate risk, and high risk. So let us just take a look. What is the recent uh, country risk classification uh, that we have? Uh, wherein the quarantine period and swap testing dates will be dependent upon. Now, from January 16 to January 31, 2022, here are the new country list classifications announced by our acting presidential spokesperson, Carlo Nograles, uh, based from the IATF latest resolution. For the red list countries, the following are the countries under red list as per IATF Resolution Number One Five Seven B. So this will be Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba, Canada, Curacao, French Guiana, Iceland, Malta, Mayotte, Mozambique, Puerto Rico, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Spain, and U.S. Virgin Islands. So we have a total of I am. Ah, uh, meron po tayong 
14, 14 countries uh, na nasa red list po. Ang maganda naman po nito, bagamat nasa red list, uh, i-discuss, dimiscuss ko po yan in my previous video na allowed naman po, hindi nilagyan ng travel ban, pero yung quarantine period po, uh, it will just simply be a bit longer. So to know more about the details, please watch my other videos and yung video yung gagawin ko po solely for red list countries. Now, uh, what else? For the red list countries, so ito naman po, January 16, 2022 until January 31. Uh, Bangladesh, Benin, Bhutan, British Virgin Islands, China, mainland, Ivory Coast, Shibuti, Equatorial Guinea, Malvinas or Falkland Islands, the Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Japan, Kosovo, Kyrgyzstan, Montserrat, Morocco, Niger, Oman, Pakistan, Paraguay, Saba, this is the special municipality of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, St. Barthelemy, Senegal, Sheila Leone, St. Eustatius, Taiwan, Timor-Leste, East Timor, or Uganda. And bakit importante na diniscuss natin ang red list country at uh, green list country? It is simply because everyone... All countries that are not mentioned either sa red or green, it means all of you fall into the yellow list country. At yan ang topic natin for today. So what is the arrival protocol for anyone who will be arriving between January 16 to 31, 2022? So here are the updates. So first and foremost, for fully vaccinated travelers. So unang-una po, nabago na po ang number of hours when it comes to the RT-PCR test negative results. So you must have taken it within 48 hours before your flight. And then upon arriving here in the Philippines on the fifth day, that's the time that you'll get swabbed. Again, the result may be released between 24 to 48 hours. So therefore, for non-OFW and foreigners, you are expected to have a pre-booking of at least six days and five nights. And now, let me share to you your home quarantine, something that is different and that was improved actually. So now the home quarantine is only seven days, up to seven days from uh, counting day one as your day of arrival here in the Philippines. So it means if you'll be able to uh, go home or check out by on the sixth day, once you arrive home, at least one day na lang yung iyong home quarantine. It's not as long as before. Yeah. So one advantage that we have if you're be coming from the yellow list country and you are a fully vaccinated traveler. Now, how about those not vaccinated or partially vaccinated? Alamin po natin. Para naman po sa mga partially vaccinated at not vaccinated or the status cannot be confirmed, you also have to present your RT-PCR test taken within 48 hours before your flight. Anong ibig sabihin po nito? Magbigay po tayo ng example. Kung sakasakali po, ang lipad po ninyo ay, let us just say, January 25. Ngayon, uh, 48 hours will come uh, will count two days back. So that will be 24 and 23. So January 23. Dahil hours ang binibilang po nila, hindi yung date, ang tanong, anong oras yung flight mo sa 25? Halimbawa po, 10 a.m. Kung 10 a.m. ang flight mo, ibig sabihin sa January 23, Pwede ka magpakuha ng RT-PCR test or swap, magpa-swap test ng January 23, 10 a.m. pataas. 11 a.m., 12 noon, 1 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Huwag lang pong earlier than January 23, 10 a.m. Hindi po po pwede ang January 23, 8 a.m., 7 a.m. Kasi that will be more than 48 hours. Ang abot na po ng 50 na oras na hindi na po nila tatanggapin. So I hope that's clear and that helps you to have an idea kung uh, ano po ba yung ibig sabihin ng 48 hours. Ngayon, pagdating mo sa Pilipinas, Ikapitong araw ang iyong swap testing, ang iyong pre-booking if you're a non-OFW. If you're a non-OFW, then you're four or a balik payan, then you can reserve for a hotel for eight days and seven nights. Ito lang po, uh, since you are partially vac vaccinated or not yet vaccinated, your total number of days for home quarantine will be 14 days. Yan po, 14 days. Even if you have a negative RT-PCR test result, you still have to quarantine for 14 
activities. So this is our protocol pop for yellow list countries. So once again, for fully vaccinated and partially vaccinated or not vaccinated at all, now 48 hours is the number of hours that you have to take your swab test. At uh, siguraduhin nyo po, nadala nyo po ang hard copy po nito pagdating nyo po sa airport. Anyway, sige, ibibigay ko po sa inyo in details ano po ba yung mga kinakailangan ninyo kapag kayo ay pauwi na ng Pilipinas. Mga kabayan at kaibigan, ito po ang limang travel steps ay summarize. Lahat po ng points wherein you will be, uh, kumbaga po, sa pag-uwi po ninyo para mas mapadali po natin, I summarized it into five travel steps so that at least alam nyo po yung mga pointers na kailangan kailangan yung gawin or mga tips po na ibibigay ko po sa inyo sa pre-departure, airport check and arrival in the Philippines, hotel quarantine at once to go home or go back to your uh, kumbaga sa bahay na po ninyo. So simulan na po natin. Sa pre-departure po, alamin natin ano-ano po ba yung mga kailangan nyo i-prepare? What is common to all airports? And at the same time, what is unique to a certain airport? So sasabihin at babanggitin ko po yan sa inyo. So unang-una po natin is itong uh, 48 hours po or RT-PCR test taken for within 48 hours before your flight. So, maghanap na po kayo ng laboratory dyan kung saan ang bansa po kayo manggagaling uh, na makakapag-release po ng resulta within 48 hours or bago po ng flight ninyo. So, make sure na may print out copy po kayo ng inyong negative RT-PCR test kasi kailangan po ito sa airport at madalas sinahanap. Maraming mga viewers natin na nanonood po ng channel natin at nagme-message na sa akin Sinasabi nila, Ms. Cheney, pakisabi po sa lahat ng mga manonood po ninyo na magdala po ng printout copy nito po. RT-PCR test negative result at ng vaccination certificate so that at least mabilis lang po ang proseso. So yun, sinishare ko po sa inyo so that at least you also know. Yan. And then at that, at the same time, I also would like to inform you that one half pass. So again, there's another tutorial video that I have for this. So yung pangalawang kailangan nyo pong i-prepare bago po kayo lumipad ay kailangan nyo pong mag-register at least three days before your arrival uh, sa one half pass. So two steps po ito. Uh, pwede po yung number one is done within three days before your arrival. Hindi pwedeng mas maaga. Dapat within three days before your arrival, hindi po flight. And then step number two, 24 hours before your flight ayan po yung EHDC naman po so pagkatapos nyo po mag-register sa step number 1 makakakuha po kayo nito ito po yung ating tinatawag na OHP QR code now once po sa step number 2, minapos po ninyo, ito transfer kasi lahat yung information mula sa step 1, papunta sa step 2 in case may changes or any other updates. And then it will generate again another QR code for you na may updated details. Screenshot nyo lang po yan. So from step number 1, nakakuha ka QR code sa screenshot. Step number 2, nakakuha ka ng uh, kumbaga ng QR code na updated, screenshot mo, ipakita sa airport of origin, airport pagdating sa Pilipinas, sa immigration, and then sa hotel, and then you're good po. Ayan, importante siya. Reminder, uh, pag tinanong po kayo ng port of, or uh, country of exit, automatically like po yan, yan po yung original country kung saan po kayo nang galing. So, hindi po yung layover countries po ninyo. So, yan po yung ating mga reminders. Now, sa airport po ba hinihingi ito? Sa lahat po. So, all international airports in the Philippines, uh, this will be asked. So, please complete this. Uh, sino po bang kailangan mag-complete nito? So, OFWs and OFWs, foreigners, and even balikbayans of all ages po, ha? So, even infants and children, uh, kailangan po nito. So, siguraduhin niyo po mga guardians and parents that you will complete one for them. How? Again, please watch my video tutorial so that at least you'll know the details. Next one is this. This time, this is only for OFWs who will be arriving in Clark International Airport or Subic Airport po. So this is what we call the Red Cross Dash Lab dot AI CIF form. So it simply means that you have to complete this along with your One Health Pass. So this will be used for your swab testing. So, kailangan nyo mag-complete niyan at please make sure eto din po, itong QR code na ito ay screenshot ninyo kasi sa araw ng swab testing, ha, hanapin po nila 
ito sa iyo. Actually, hahanapin din yan ang pag-arrival sa airport ng OWA. Tatanong nila kung meron ka dito and they would like to see it. Yan. Now, uh, karagdagan lang po. So, ito yung tinatawag na CIF or Electronic Case Investigation Form related sa inyong swab testing sa hotel. Mas Jamie, paano kami, uh, paano kami sa ibang airport, anong mangyayari sa amin? If that is for OFW, what is for non-OFWs at iba pang mga OFWs? Balikan ko po ito ha. Yan. So, uh, para po sa lahat, ang magiging Electronic Case Investigation Form na po ninyo ay itong One Health Pass kasi since it's, it gathered naman po all the information. So, this is what you will be uh, using. Now, for the OFWs, kasi tatanungin naman kayo, di ba, what type of traveler are you? So, pag nilagay niyong OFW yan, so automatically na po, ang swap testing niyo ay complementary or free from the government and OWA. Kung kayo ay foreigner or balik bayan, automatically, once you choose the type of traveler, uh, ibibigay naman po nila sa inyo yung option later on once you complete the registration, which Okay, a uh, swap test provider would you like to uh, kumbaga use or kumbaga makipag-partner with or kumbaga i-avail yung service. So, yan ba ay detoxic care or pad lab? So, dalawa lang po yung choices. Although, may apat doon, naka-gray out na po yung dalawa. So, dalawa lang pagkukunian nyo, detoxic care or pad lab. Now, ang, if you will be traveling with Philippine Airlines, everyone automatically detoxic care ang partner nila. So, you will have the sub-tester. Ang sub-tester ninyo will be detoxy care. So, ang mangyayari, once you're done na, di ba, natapos yung registration, makikita nyo yung QR code na pinakita ko sa inyo kanina. Now, meron kayo makikita before the end po, nung inyong upon getting the QR code, transaction details. So, kung padlab yon, then you'll get the padlab details. If detoxic care yon, you'll get the detoxic care uh, transaction details ng OFWs and balikbayans and foreigners. And then, you will be given an option would you like to pay online or in the airport? So, if you would like to do that. So, whatever you prefer, online, bibigyan kayo ng receipt. If gusto nyo sa airport, pwede rin naman sa airport. So, hahanapin sa inyo yan ng Department of Transportation. OFWs, ang hahanapin lang sa inyo ng OWA at ng Marina, kung seafarer, ay ang inyong One Health Pass. So, yun. I hope that's quite clear. So, again, uh, that's the difference between the two. Now, tingnan po natin. Ito po yung Dash Lab. So, katulad ng sinabi ko po sa inyo, kung kayo ay OFW na arriving in the Clark International Airport at the same time sa Subic, ito po yung aking tutorial. Ayan. So, once you see the tutorial, you can uh, do it step by step. May mga tips din po ako dyan para at least madali na po para sa inyo. Number 5, ayan. Uh, para po sa number 5 po natin, ito po yung tinatawag natin Chase app. So, kung wala pa po kayo nito, mag-download na po kayo nito and mag-register. Uh, para naman po doon sa mga meron na, then all you have to do is, again, uh, use it when you need to doon sa airport na, uh, kumbaga, pupuntahan po ninyo. Like Cebu, Cebu is very particular about this. Clark, hindi ako hinanapan. Naiya yung mga kakilala ko. Hindi rin hinanapan na iya. One, two, or three. So, uh, but then again, uh, mandatorily, kung titingnan natin sa list ng mga travelers, anong kailangan, kasama po ito. So, I'm sharing this to you so that at least in case na hanapin sa inyo, meron kayo. Pero again, I'm very uh, honest po sa inyong lahat na hindi all the time hinahanap ito. Unlike one half mass, 100% sure, laging hinahanap iyon. Yan. And then, what else? Another for pre-departure, ika-anim naman po, only for non-OFWs and foreigners pre-booking ng hotel po ninyo. So again, uh, please make sure yung guidelines na binigay ko po sa inyo kanina, yun po yung total number of days na kailangan nyo i-book sa hotel and at the same time po, i-present po ninyo sa airport. So for fully vaccinated, kailangan nyo at least 6 days lang po na pre-booking at sa inyo namang unvaccinated at least 8 days po. Coming from the yellow country. Now, uh, para naman po sa ating mga 
Ayan, uh, vaccination certificate. So, ito po yung latest rule po natin. Sabi po, letter A, for any OFW, yung spouse po nila, children and parents traveling with them, if they get vaccinated on board, uh, they uh, overseas, they will uh, it will be honored po yung kanilang certificate. Whether may reciprocal agreement or wala yung bansa na panggagalingan nila. Pero, letter B, for Filipinos who are non-OFWs vaccinated in the country or abroad, and foreign vaccinated in the Philippines, either their Vaxert PH, Digital Vaccination Certificate, or BOQWHO, yung ano po, yung yellow card na tinatawag, ayan po ay pwedeng i-present po dito, or the National or State Digital Certificate of the Foreign Government where they got vaccinated, which has accepted Vaxert PH as under a reciprocal agreement unless otherwise permitted by IATF. Yan po. Like for me, I'm from the UK po yung aking certificate so tinatanggap naman po siya kasi merong reciprocal agreement na po sila. And OFW naman po ako so uh, tinatanggap din naman po yan. And then na uh, letter uh, C, ayan, for foreign nationals vaccinated abroad, uh, WHO issued ICV or the National or State Digital Certificate of the Foreign Government which has accepted Vaxert BH under a reciprocal agreement unless otherwise permitted by the IATF. At oh, above all this po, kailangan FDA approve yung brand ng vaccine na uh, kumbaga inilagay po sa inyo. Kasi kung hindi, uh, kahit pa it complies po to what they mentioned here, hindi rin po maaring ma-accept yan kung ang brand is hindi po, brand of vaccine is not accepted or approved by WHO and FDA of the Philippines. Ha! Huh. Finally, ang daming kailangan talaga for pre-departure pero okay lang po yun. It's better na prepared po kayo kesa sa hindi dahil pagdating niyo po sa airport check-in, napakadali lang po niyan. So sa airport check-in, ano ba yung mga titingnan po nila sa inyo? So katulad ng sinasabi ko, pasaporte, lagi niyo po kailangan. Of course, yung flight ticket po ninyo. And then uh, just make sure po yung one half pass already na and other documentation. Lahat ng uh, sinabi po natin kanina. So please make sure na sa easy access bag po ninyo yan nang sa gayon ay madali lang po ang inyong proseso. So, including po yung pre-booking ng hotel for non-OFWs. At uh, remember po ha, kung wala pong RT-PCR test, negative result, hindi po kayo papasakayin. Very strict po kasi ang ano natin, mandatory protocol. So, please ensure that you have that with the rest of the other documents. Then, pagkatapos ng biyahe po ninyo, eto na po, pabalik na sa Pilipinas. Ano po ba yung mga kakailanganin at kailangan yung paghandaan? Sinamarize ko po in two, five, para at least mas madali nyo po, uh, kumbaga maunawaan and at the same time matandaan. So, una po, the planning, briefing, immigration, luggage claim, and custom. So, ano po bang mangyayari sa the planning? So, most of the time, papakomplete po nila kayo ng dalawang dokumento. It's either the arrival card or customs declaration form. In my situation po kasi na ubusan siguro sila ng arrival card. So, customs declaration form lang yung pinakomplete nila sa akin. Pero sa iba naman po, nakapagpakomplete sila ng arrival card. So, Jamie, paano kung wala ang arrival card na pa? complete sa akin kasi hihingin sa immigration yon Okay lang, hingi ka lang sa ground stop sa airport. Ako gano'n ang ginawa ko ng hingi ako kasi wala sa akin binigay eh. So yan. So sa so the planning, most of the time may briefing yan. I-inform kayo what you need to do, what you need to expect. If you're wearing a face, uh, kumbaga shield, pagbaba niyo usually bago pumasok sa terminal, may body thermal scanning. So, papatanggal sa inyo yung face mask niyo at yung face shield niyo para at least mask scan lang kayo. And then you can wear it again. And then after that, so sa deplaning niyo, uh, you will then be, uh, kumbaga papasok na kayo sa terminal, you will be ushered to different uh, kumbaga locations. OFWs and then OFWs and balikbayans and foreigners will be separated from each other. Uh, OFWs will be in one place, sea-based, land-based, and then non-OFW, balikbayan, and foreigners will be in another, kumbaga, place or kumbaga, gathering ng, uh, kumbaga, airport. So, sa OFW muna tayo. So, sa mga OFW, ito ang inyong kailangan pagkatandaan. Uh, 
Unang pila po ninyo ay sa BOQ, pero bago yan, i-check muna nila. So, papaupuin nila kayo. Sasabihin nila, ito yung mga apat na dokumento na kailangan namin sa inyo. Uh, during that time na dumating po ako doon, apat na dokumento po ang prepare nila. So, one half pass, and then... Uh, Yes, one half pass, customs declaration form, arrival card, at yung uh, tinatawag po nilang, meron yung authorization eh, authorization form po na manggagaling naman po sa kanila. Now, maaring ipaprepare na rin po sa inyo yung certificate of vaccination at the same time po yung uh, negative RT-PCR test results. So, maari po. So, basta make sure na prepared na yan. Now, Once pagkatapos mag-briefing ng taga Coast Guard or taga BOQ, lahat ng kailangan na kaprepare na sasabihin nila sa inyo, sino sa inyo ang ready na, pumila na po kayo. So, papipilahin kayo number one sa BOQ. So, ang titingnan nila ang BOQ sa inyo is one health pass. So, After they scan it, so they will just simply submit it. It will take several minutes, depending gano kabilis ang internet. Doon po sa airport, yung sa akin po kasi it took a while. Talagang nagpabalik-balik pa po ako. Uh, but then again, eventually na, na process po nila. Pagka-process nito, ang ginagawa po nila, kung ano man po yung process na yun, automatically nagka-transfer siya sa OWA. So next step is OWA. For land base, for marina, eto naman po yung mga CP. So, simulan po muna natin sa land base. Sa OPA po, hihingin po nila yung one half pass, pasaporte ninyo, affidavit of undertaking, work permit at visa. So, eto po pala yung sinasabi ko kanina. Uh, hindi authorization, it's affidavit of uh, undertaking po. Uh, ibibigay nila sa inyo to at sasabihin nila po ano yung kukompletuhin. So, kapag nabigay na po ninyo ito, work permit or visa, documented card, undocumented OFW, uh, maaaring tingnan din po nila yung RT-PCR test result at vaccination card. Pagkatapos po nila makita ang lahat to, ibibigay na po nila sa inyo yung inyong uh, hotel assignment. So, malalaman na niyo po kung saan po kayong hotel, uh, kumbaga po uh, naka-assign. Uh, ganun din po sa CB, so ang hihingi naman nila sa inyo, one half pass QR code, Siemens book po ninyo, o Seafarer's book po, and then affidavit of undertaking, by the way, pakisulat sa upper right hand corner po ng affidavit of undertaking kung anong pangalan ng manning agency po ninyo. And then a copy of RT-PCR test and vaccination card or sir certificate. Pagkatapos po no, bibigay na po nila yung assigned hotel sa inyo. Yan po. So, yan po ang para sa OFW. Para naman po sa non-OFW, so you will be another uh, site po of the airport. So, they will again ask you to complete all the documents with you. And then, unang pila po, BOQ. Pagkatapos po, diretso na po kayo doon sa Department of Tourism. So, sa Department of Tourism, titingnan nila lahat ng mga dokumento na kailangan niyo po upon arrival. Uh, kasama na po dyan, tatanungin nila, so, bayad ka na ba? Meron ka bang swab testing uh, provider? So, kung meron ka na, bayad ka na, show the receipt. Kung wala pa, sasabihin nila sa iyo. Halimbawa, okay, may transaction details ka ba? So, pwede mo na siyang bayaran here in the airport. And then, you, they will just have to, you will just have to pay It and go back to them and present the receipt. Kaya nga po ako kung okay naman yung system at okay ang online payment, online na lang po kayo para less na yung hassle sa pila, less yung tagal nyo sa airport, balik punta na po agad kayo sa hotel quarantine. Again, kung hindi naglolo ko yung system ng online payment nila kasi sometimes it does po. So yan, medyo honest. Talagang sinasabi ko po sa inyo kung ano po talaga yung nangyayari para at least you also know that. And then pagkatapos po niyan, titingnan din yung inyong hotel booking. So again, uh, just make sure po na yung hotel booking po ninyo ay accurate kasi talagang tinitingnan po nila yan. Alam niyo naman yung mga issue po natin the past few uh, weeks na meron pong ilan na mga non-OFWs po o balik ba na nag-skip po ng kanilang quarantine kaya very particular po sila dito. Yan, mga kabayan. So, yan po, OFWs, non-OFWs, balikbayan, and foreigners are what you have to take into consideration. Now, after the planning, after the briefing, and then you can go to the, ayan na po, uh, pwede na po kayong pumunta sa immigration. So, sa immigration, they will take a look at your passport. Of course, they will take a look at this one. So, ito po, ang ating OHP or yung QR code po natin. And of course, if you are uh, dependent Sentence of a Filipino, if you're a foreigner, make sure na may marriage certificate ka kung ikaw ang spouse. And if you are the children of a Filipino, so just birth certificate will actually 
At same thing with OFWs din po na kumbaga uh, who will be coming home as a family. Napaka-importante po niya. And then after that, luggage claim na po tayo. So madalas dahil medyo matagal tayo dun sa loob, naka-arrange na po iyan. Luggage claim sorted out po siya. So easy for you to find your luggage. Ako po ang bilis-bilis ko po na nakita yung aking bagahe. And pagkatapos ng bagahe, ayan na po. End na po tayo. Customs na po. So i-present niya lang po yung customs declaration form. And then voila, tal quarantine muna po tayo. Tutuloy. Now, Uh, just make sure, katulad po ng sabi ko, kung kayo ay fully vaccinated, uh, just make sure po na ang definition po nila nito is fully vaccinated ka kung 14 days after your second dose for vaccine that have two doses at 14 days naman after yung first dose po ninyo kung J&J po yung inyong brand. Katulad po na nabanggit ko earlier, ta dependent po dito kung fully vaccinated ka or hindi ang length ng iyong quarantine period. So, what will happen now? Now, once you go to the quarantine hotel, transportation, who will provide this? So, ganito, OFWs, once you exit the terminal, hanapin nyo, tanongin nyo na saan po yung bus papunta po sa mga hotel for OFWs. So, OWA and Marina had provided that for you. So, may mga buses that will be go going to the respective hotels that you were assigned to. So again, hanapin nyo lang yon, and then usually, uh, marami naman po yan sila. So ako, salamat nung ako uh, during that time, uh, kumbaga, andun po ako sa harapan. So I, mas gusto ko po harapan kasi yung maliit na hand carry ko, dala-dala ko na lang yung mga check-in luggage ko, yung, yung pinasok sa chunk ng kumbaga po ng bus Yan. How about po na ang FWs, balikbayan, and foreigners? So, what you can do, actually, hindi pa po kayo pwede magpasundo sa inyong pamilya dahil magka-quarantine pa kayo. So, ang kailangan nyo pong gawin is just ensure na makapag-arrange ng transportation with the airport. So, meron naman po sila dyan ng mga, uh, kumbaga, taxis. Now, uh, akala ko po kasi dati, dati po, when you take a look po, ayun sa guidelines nila when it comes to arriving and, or, kumbaga, yung hotel transportation, sinasabi po nilang meter tax. Taxi. Meron din coupon taxi. Pero actually, do sa mga nakausap ko, sabi nila, naka-flag down rate na po. Halimbawa, hindi siya metered. Uh, sa halimbawa, sasabihin mo, saan ang hotel mo? Uh, somewhere in uh, near Mall of Asia. So, sasabihin nila, ito yung presyo. So, yun lang. Parang ganun na lang ano siya. Hindi siya naka-metro, pero fix na yung price as per the destination. So, make sure na at least you talk about it pe, para hindi po kayo mabulaga pagdating nyo doon tapos mas mataas pa yung singil. Dapat kung ano yung pinag-usapan yun yun. Tandaan nyo, naka-register naman yan. Uh, Kung baga sa airport, just in case may misbehavior sila, nag-overpricing sila po, then what was expected or what was discussed prior. Uh, Kung baga po, pagpunta po doon sa, I mean, from the airport, bago pumunta po doon sa hotel na assigned po kayo, pwede nyo po yan i-call ang attention doon po through the airport po kasi naka-register po ito sa airport. Yan po. Now, kapag kayo po ay nasa quarantine hotel na, ano po ang kailangan gawin? So, uh, just make sure OFWs to coordinate and know the number of your house parent or wa house parent. Ibibigayan usually sa inyong Uh, upon check-in, bibigyan kayo ng listahan, may letter yan, sasabihin sa inyo, ito yung mga kailangan yung gawin during quarantine. Same thing with non-OFW. And then they will tell you this is the number, ito yung mga frequently uh, used numbers at pwede nyo tawagan sa airport, sa hotel. Ayan. At the same time, sasabihin nila, ito yung number ng OWA house parenting nyo for OFWs. Now, uh, anong gagawin ninyo? Uh, ganun din uh, sa inyo ng OFWs, bibigay nila yung mga numbers na pwede nyo tawagan. Uh, ganun din kung sakasakali nag-offer sila ng room service, uh, like for food, extra food, then they will also give that to you. Again, uh, maaring hindi lahat ng hotel may room service. Ako salamat lang, masarap ang pagkain uh, doon sa aking hotel na pinag, uh, kumaga, quarantinan. And then after that, uh, kapag time na ng swab testing po ninyo, usually naman ang OWA house pair, they remind you about that. Pero ako kahit hindi pa sila nagre-remind, tumatawag na talaga ako. Nagda-double check. Although may idea na ako kung kailan, gusto ko lang ma-check na kailan ang swab testing date ko and then they will check it and they will let you know. Makikita nyo rin po yan sa one half pass kaya pwede nyo rin po yung tingnan. And then kapag nakuha nyo na po yung negative RT-PCR test result ninyo 24 hours to 48 hours after swab testing, uh, sino po yung i-inform ninyo? 
Una sa OFW use ang inform niyo po dalawa. So, OWA House Parent, i-email ninyo, nakalagay din yung email sa bibigay sa inyong letter at ang inyong front desk. And then, sasabihin nila, you can actually check out kapag na-receive na po nila ito. How about you ng OFWs at balikbayan? You will email only one, yung front desk po. And then, once na-receive nila, sasabihin nila, pwede na po kayo mag-check out. At syempre, kapag nakapag-check out na po kayo, ready na po kayong Uwe. Pero teka muna, may karagdagan po akong reminder sa inyong lahat bago po tayo mag-usap ng pag-uwi. May nangyari po sa batch po namin na nag-quarantine. Kung sakasakali po, ang tip ko lang po sa inyo, kung kayo ay smoker, uh, upon checking in, uh, just make sure as na po yung, uh, yung font desk na do you have uh, kumaga, a room for smoking room? Ayan, kasi kapag inassign po kayo doon sa non-smoking room at hindi nyo mapigilan at gusto nyo mag-smoke, imagine nyo ang haba po ng quarantine natin, may fine po. So, ang nangyari po sa amin, pauwi na kami. OFW, so like for me, sa Clark po ako, pero taga Calabarzon ako, so may bus kami papuntang Manila sa PTEX or Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange para doon po ako, kung magkakumuna ka ng transportation, pa-uwi po sa aking uh, city. Now, uh, during that time, as we were about to go home, so pumupunta po kasi kami, yung bus, may three stops po yun. Again, this is for OFWs only. Ito yung tinatawag na OWA Hatid Provincia. Libre lang po ito. Now, sabi po nila, <laughs> so tigil po kami sa different, uh, kumbaga, hotels. Hotel namin, isa pang hotel, pangatlong hotel, bago pumunta ng Manila. Pagkadating po namin sa pangatlong hotel, natagtataka kami, ba't ang tagal, ang tagal, ang tagal? I felt that there was something not okay. Kasi po, uh, medyo parang may, alam mo yun, nagkakakomotion doon somewhere sa reception. Kami po kasi hindi pwedeng bumaba. Doon lang kami sa upuan namin. Ngayon, ako po kasi, uh, haga ko nagising. Imagine nyo po, uh, mga 3 a.m. gising na po ako noon. And then, uh, 5 a.m. bumaba na po ako sa reception. Although, 5.30 sabi nila kasi gusto ko talaga po makauwi na po ng maaga. Imagine, sampung araw po ako na quarantine uh, during that time. So, uh, sabi ko uh, sa driver, uh, manong, ano po ang problema? Sabi ko, kuya driver, yan. Sabi ko, uh, is everything okay? Anong oras po tayo aalis dito? Kasi anong oras na yun? That was like uh, 7 or mag-8 o'clock na po ng umaga. Samantalang umalis po kami sa hotel, mga 6.30. Uh, so, at alam niyo po yun, ang tagal. Gusto ko na makarating ng Manila kasi pag later pa yan, matatraffic kami, mas matagal pa po. Uh, and then, pagkatapos po nun, uh, sabi po niya, meron po kasi yata na ano, na hindi nagbayad po. Ah, ganito. Meron po kasi na smoker na OFW na naka-check-in doon sa non-smoking. At syempre, alam nyo na po, uh, hindi napigilan na Yossi po. So, pagka Yossi po niya, naamoy nung chinek nitong uh, pa-check-out na po. So, hindi siya pinapalabas ng hotel hanggang hindi siya nagbabayad ng fine. Yung fine po na hinihingi ng hotel is 10,000 pesos. Imagine nyo po, 10,000 pesos. At hindi siya talaga papalabasin ng hotel. Ngayon, nagkataon na walang pera, walang cash si Kuya OFW. Na ako po. So, humihingi pa, nagkocontact sa, siguro po, nasa spouse po niya o nasa asawa niya po. Yung pera, eh, anong oras lang yun? 8 a.m. So, baka tulog pa ba ang banko, sarado, unless may online, uh, kumbaga, transactions. So, maano po, mahabang proseso. Ang sabi ko lang po, sabi ko, hindi pa pwede, mag-join na lang siya sa isang bus. Kasi, hindi natin alam gano'ng katagal yan. Ang dami po namin, mga 24 po kami or so sa bus po. Kasi 50% lang po yung capacity ng bus of 50 plus seater po yun. So, ang dami-dami po namin na antala simply because someone had smoke in a non-smoking area and wala siyang pambayad doon sa fine. So, sa akin pa, sinishare ko lang po sa inyo para maiwasan po natin yung unnecessary gas. So, sampung libo is still sampung libo. Di po ba? So, kung kayo ay smoker, as is there a smoking room? Paki-assign na lang po sa smoking room. Huwag sa non-smoking room kasi that's understandable naman po. You need to at least smoke. Hindi po ba? So, yun po mga kabayan. Ayan. So, kung ready na po kayo, OFW, so you can always ask kung malayo ang bahay ninyo from the hotel to your actual home, then pwede po kayo mag-avail ng OWA, Hatid, Probinsya. And then, ako po kasi tumatawag ako sa kanila talaga, tinatanong ko, sasabihin ko sa kanila, uh, meron po po kayo, ano po ba yung pinaka uh, maaga 
na sasakyan po para po pauwi po sa ganito. Ano, saan po ba ako mag-stop? Kanya, kasi papasundo na lang po ako eh. Uh, so, ang nangyari po, so, sumakay muna po ako ng bus, dun po sa PTEX, dun lang po ako nagpasundo, pauwi po ng bahay. Pwede rin naman po, meron pa silang other transportation doon, na provided pa rin ng OWA. So, Clark, PTEX, PTEX to your hometown. So, kahit saan man nyo na malapit, doon na may sasakyan sa PTEX, then pwede. Again, this is in the, uh, kumbaga, Manila area, papunta po sa Calabar Zone and other, kumbaga, mga regions. So, yun po mga kabayan, kung sakasakali naman uh, kayo ay non-OFWs either magparent po kayo ng sasakyan, maaari niyo pong sabihin sa hotel just in case para at least uh, kung meron silang provided, then maaari yung ma-rent. Or pwede po kayo magpasundo sa inyong mga kamag-anak. Pwede po yan. OFWs, pwede bang magpasundo kayo sa kamag-anak? Pwede din naman. Ito, another reminder. OFWs, uh, make sure kung papasundo po kayo Uh, sa inyong kamag-anak, you please inform the, the front office or yung OWA house parent ninyo nang sa gayon, hindi po maghihintay na matagal ang bus. Nangyari na naman po sa batch namin yon So, uh, may count po kasi. So, like the bus drivers, tsaka yung conductor niya, may number of OFWs na kailangan na head count na nasa bus. Ngayon, kulang kami ng dalawa. So, ang tagal, tagal na naman po namin bago ko umalis. So, 6.30 yon So, tagal. So, sabi namin, ang tagal ha, bakit ganun ka ako? Yun pala, naririnig ko na po sila nagtatalo. Eh, kulang pa tayo ng dalawang tao, wala pang tao. Eh, ganito na yung call, eh, yung mag-call time eh. So, in short po, uh, sabi po nila towards the end, yun pala, nagpasundo po sa kamag-anak si OFW. Sabi po ng isang kamag-anak, ng isang kakilala po sa bus, pero hindi nagsama, hindi nagsabi kay OWA house parents. So, hindi na sabi kay uh, bus driver at conductor. So, yun lang po uh, mga OFW para at least, uh, alam niyo yun, hindi rin nakakaabala sa ibang mga OFW na walang sundo naman sa hotel. At least uh, they know, si OWA house parent, masabihan si conductor, hindi na magiintay ng matagal. So, yun po mga kabayan ng aking tips at syempre, upon going home, uh, ingat po kayo. At syempre po, looking forward na masayang makasama niyo po ang inyong pamilya. At mga kabayan, katulad ng sabi ko po sa inyo, kung wala po kayong sundo, you can avail of the OWA Uwi Ana at OWA Hatid Pro Binsya. So again, mga kabayan at kaibigan, uh, kung ano man po mga updates ng IATF, that's something that I will definitely share to you. nag lang po tayo ng better news, better protocol. Uh, but for the meantime, this is the protocol that we have from January 16 to 31, 2021. At syempre, sa mga pauwi po, ingat mo kayo sa inyong pag-uwi. Have a pleasant flight. And uh, once again, everyone, if you find this video very helpful and informative, please click like. And I'm inviting you to please subscribe to my channel kung this is your first time to watch this video. And thank you once again to all everyone. Lagi po kayo nanonood ng aking uh, video. So once again, this is Jamie Iris of Jamie Iris Talk TV. Simply saying, God bless you. Stay safe mga kabayan. Maraming salamat and see you in my next video. Ingat po sa pag-uwi sa Pilipinas.